What is up, weirdos? You're listening to The Manic Pixie Weirdo. I'm Abigail, your host, and this is the podcast where we talk about relationships. So this is part two, the interview with Nicholas Tinek that I did on his podcast, Your Kinky Friends. Um, everybody should go listen and check that out. Um, I'll put links in the description and everything. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy it. That's gonna help a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Hey, um, talk. What do you want to talk about? What do you What's want to that? talk about, Rashi Singh? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, Abigail, if you were a one-time mistress, if you had one time to be a mistress, okay, what your desire to give your slave? I meant. I I, I think Roxy Singh's means. Um, what do you desire to do with a slave? Oh, um, that's a kind of better way. Yeah. Um, I would probably, I mean, obviously the main, the main goal is for, is pleasure for both people in that situation. Um, and if I were to do it, I would be obviously dominate dominating, um, because that's just my personality. I'm incredibly, I'm a, I'm a very demanding person and I have impossibly high standards for absolutely everything. Um, and I know that they're impossibly high, but I don't care if that's just the way it is. <laughs> um, I come with like food too. Like, Oh, want- everything. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, like right now in my sight line, the bushes are like bothering me, but that's because <laughs> like, at, at, like it's, yeah, it's just like, that's what you would need to do. Go trim my bushes, man. Do it. <laughs> do the things that I don't have time to do. Clean my house. Like, I don't know. But I I just am. I'm incredibly, I'm a very demanding and probably bratty sometimes person. Um, Submissive gardener. You could, you could be, you, you could do it like a dominatrix gardening. Yeah, and I hate gardening. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Make them do it. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to start a whole channel and have different television shows. Oh, that'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Yeah, uh, totally. Okay. Um, we're going to, you know, <clears throat> we're going to make it um, very fun, but um, I do want to take it down a notch okay. and, and make, make it a little serious first. Okay. Um, and this doesn't have to be kinky or sex or BDSM related, but um, you know, uh, you're married. You're in a, yes. a, a very no, healthy common law marriage. Common law, biggest. okay. Or, you have a partner. Yeah. For that. And uh, but you seem very happy in a very you know in a wonderful relationship, and that's wonderful. I am too, and um, with someone else. And, (laughs) and, um, but like this COVID stuff is really bringing people down. So uh, not just like it's, it's affecting everything from, um, income to food, to going out to social, you know, things and stuff like that. And especially people with any kind of, um, mental I don't want to say issues. That's not the right word. I want to just say, like, you know. Well, mental health struggles. Okay, yeah, that, okay. Let, let's say that. Let's say that. Mental health struggles. Because, like, we all got them. Like, not every day is a, is a beautiful, sunny day. You know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't want it to be either. Yeah, so, <laughs> so with everything that's going on in the world today, it really seems like the world's ending. Um, you know, but I'm sure it's not. Um, how are you dealing with it? Well, I don't really know. I mean, I feel like I'm doing pretty okay, but that's probably got a lot to do with the fact that, again, we talked about like spectrums last time on my podcast, and I'm probably on the like the lower side of the spectrum um, for agoraphobia um, because I just I'm very comfortable like with myself um, and just being alone. So it hasn't really, and I work from home. I like signed up to work from home, like before COVID started. Um, 
So it hasn't really, and I don't, I don't like to go out. Like I'm not a big person that like goes to clubs or like bars or like, I'm not a very social person in that way. I used to be. And I must say a lot of clubs and bars are dirty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would too. I used, I did that too. I did that like, it, you know, younger when I was younger, <coughs> um, I'm 95 now, but like, you know, I, when I was younger, I definitely had that period of time that I think everybody has where you kind of like, you know, become a wild, crazy person. Yeah. And I, you just like, do whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, everybody has it. It's all, it's a thing. It doesn't matter. If you're a human being, you have that part of your, you know, your life. Um, but I kind of, I wouldn't necessarily say like outgrew it because I just got tired of it. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this. I don't even know if I like doing this. So I just kind of was like, well, I'm just going to not do it anymore. And so I'm, I'm very much a homebody. Um, I also have, like yeah, no. And I also have, um, anxiety, like crippling anxiety. And so I can't be in like large groups of people, um, for, like any sort of significant amount of time before I start like having an anxiety attack. So it's just easier for me and I'm happier, <laughs> honestly, um, just kind of like being, I guess, isolated, you know, for a COVID term. The other thing too, that I would like to say about COVID is that I understand that it has hit everybody really hard and it's a very difficult time for everybody the positive a positive thing for me that i have found personally i don't know if this applies to anybody else i just know that this is a very personal thing for me um i have found a lot of solace in being able to like interview and talk to other people because i do get that kind of oh my god yes. you know what i'm saying like i get that I sort of people that. interaction with but it, it it's sort of the dual per it serves the dual purpose of like I get the people interaction, but I like, A, don't have to go anywhere. I can hang out in my pajamas. Nobody cares. And and also, like, I can just hang up at any time. Like, if I'm just, like, tired of it and I can't do it, I could just be like, well, goodbye. <laughs> what, what, what's interesting also is that I think because of COVID and the, the quarantine people um, who would normally be, have so many, who would normally have so many people be like, either be on my show or be in this place or be in this thing they're like hey you want to just come on and talk yeah you know? and they're like okay yeah like i like the amount of guests and the weird like guests that i've gotten i've gotten oh, yeah. yeah it's it's insane but it's uh, so great it's so awesome because it's, plus then you don't have to like worry about you know like Okay, we have to go to this place and do this thing at this time. Like, it's literally just like, hey, are you free at noon on this time, you know, at this day? And it's like, yeah, well, then I guess we'll just turn on our computers and like talk to each other. Yeah, can, <laughs> so you, can you press a button? Yeah, can you do that? Are you capable? Okay, then let's just do that. <laughs> also, I'm lazy, so <laughs> you know, it helps. That's it's kind of the saving COVID has kind of been a saving grace for those of us that are just embrace our laziness because all, yeah, I just push a button and it's gone. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Rory Singh comes back to no, no, no. Like trampling, gagging faces, goalies are pooping, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I've done the gagging and I assume face sitting is like just what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, I've, I've done both of those. And I guess to a certain extent, I've done the trampling, but it wasn't like sexually related. It was more like popping someone's back. So I guess that doesn't really count. Um, I've never done the golden shower. Um, I'm not really into bodily fluids. I'm sort of like a germaphobe in that sense, which is weird because urine is sterile. But <laughs> I just like it. There's just something about bodily fluids. Like, I don't even like my own bodily fluids, so. <laughs> I, just think it, I just think it's messy. You know? Yeah, that too. Yeah. I don't want to clean it up afterwards. Yeah, yeah, there's that. It's kind of like the food thing when we were talking, the, the sploosh, splashing. splashing, yeah, where it's like, that doesn't really appeal to me personally because I don't like being sticky, so, <laughs> yeah. Now, okay, um, all right. 
this is your kinky friend, so we got to talk about sex a little bit. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> now, you are not a sex worker. You're not a doctor. I have worker. been, well, sort of. What do you mean? Oh, wait. All right. Sort of. Sort of I mean, I, okay. I hesitate to say that I have been a sex worker because it, I didn't do it for very long. Okay. So I was like, um, when I, during my crazy phase, <laughs> um, I was a stripper for about a month. Yeah. A little, maybe well, um, maybe like six weeks, like a little bit over a month. Um, and then I have had uh, sex for money. Um, but, you know, it was a pretty, so I have done those, th but it was only with like one person specifically. Um, so I wouldn't, I, I hesitate to like classify myself as a sex worker, but I have sort of like dabbled in that industry. Um, and I have like stuff on Reddit. So like you can buy, um, like panties or socks um, or those kind of things um, from me um, and my my stuff's on Reddit. Um, you can go check it out if anybody wants to. Um, I do okay. sell, I do sell okay. like, panties and socks and stuff like that. Okay. Um, let's, let's talk about panties and socks. Okay. Pan panties and socks. All right. First of all, socks. Why do you think people, I mean, the f whole foot fetish, Mm -hmm. Whether it's a naked foot or a sock foot or a stocking foot, mm -hmm. you know, it is, it's pretty much the most acceptable fetish of them all. I would say, I would right? say. Like, it, I mean, it's a lot different than, you know, race play or, <laughs> or knife yeah, play. Yeah. Or like that. Yeah. Why do you, why do you think, wh what do you, why do you think people are so obsessed and, um, and not, I'm not king shaming in any way, shape. Oh, no, no, no. Um, I'm just saying, why do you think? Um, like that's more acceptable than like yeah, anything than else. Other fetishes, yeah. I would probably say, and this is gonna. Hi. Um, I uh, do not mean to. Again, I don't mean to offend anybody when saying this. This is not. This is just sort of how I. I perceive it to be. Um, and I could be completely wrong. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong. I think that it's probably got to do with the fact, like one of the reasons that it is probably the most accepted is because it's sort of the most mundane and kind of boring of fetishes. And so it's kind of like, well, yeah, it's just feet. You know, like everybody's got feet. So, you know, like whatever. I mean, I just, I feel like it's, it's considered because it's sort of the, like one of the most tame, it's not, you know, you're not, you know, running a knife, you know, over your skin or, you know, hitting somebody with a riding crop, um, or something like, or like tying someone to, you know, a post or something or a bed. Um, it just seems the most tame therefore. And plus we do have a lot of, I mean, like feet and hands are very um they're much more accepted i mean you have people like hand models you know and feet yeah. models that exclusively do those things and so i i just feel like it's probably because it's you know just one of the more boring I don't, I don't know i don't even know if that's true but, but they're also part of um a, it's like a universal appendage type thing yes everybody well mostly right has hands and the feet and right. they need them and stuff like that. And oh Ross, do you like strap on and face fart? <laughs> um I don't I am very sensitive to smell. So the face fart, not so much. I'm incredibly sensitive to smell. Um strap on, yes. Yes, I have okay. done I've played with some with other girls um and women and um but I'm looking to get um a new Strap on, or actually, like really, my first strap on. I've kind of like made my own before, but I want like a professionally made. Oh, I still got to send you Chloe's Chloe's picture of her oh, Rick yeah. and Morty yeah. Rick and Morty uh, strap on dildo. Pick a yes. Rick. Yes. Uh, yes, still those. Yes. Yeah, Jonathan Myers. Yes. Yes, still those. Jonathan Myers that was in. Um, you know, in those movies, in those shows, the Tudors. He was in the Tudors. Oh, so good. And Velvet. Um, 
I think he was in Velvet Velvet Gold. The Velvet, yeah. Which is a great movie, I think. Uh, yeah. I love that glam yeah. rock. Shit. And the Tudors, incredibly stuff is beautiful. Um, dildos. Yes, I have dildos. I have used dildos. Um, <laughs> but my favorite is not, I guess, would be considered a dildo. It's the magic wand. It's my absolute favorite toy of all time. My husband bought it for me. Um, that's like, a lifesaver right there. It's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. That's a lifesaver. And and men, if you're out there with the woman, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong. You know, if she doesn't come after you have sex with her or whatever, you know, grab the vi grab the wand. You know, grab the magic wand. It, it, grab a good dildo, grab a magic wand. It's there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually it, it shows that you're cool and sexual. Abigail, you're still there. Oh no, she froze up. Okay. Go to your kinkyfriends.com. Um, oh no. Oh, she's like frozen. Ah, yes. Well, she's got to come back in. Um, Rock, let's see. Okay, can you help me? What do you need? Mr. Singh. What do you need? Go to your kinkyfriends.com. Check out me on Nicol at, at Nicholas Tanik on Twitter. Um, um, check me out on uh, on Instagram. At um, March fifty seven thirty four. Uh, check me out on Instagram um, at Nick Tanik, but we're also at Friends Kinky, and um, also at Friends Kinky on Twitter. And um, yeah, we'll be good to go. She should be back any second. She just got a. She's just having some technical things we're wrapping stuff up anyway but um <sighs> Jonathan Mars I'll have the wang okay you can have it have what you want <laughs> oh oh no oh, I hate when this shit happens Let me see. Okay. Uh, okay. Actually, actually, I am not feet fetish too much. Okay. It's I'm not either. I'm not either. I like stocking legs, but you know, it's okay. You don't have to be. Um, yeah. Any other questions? From anybody? You can go on patreon.com slash YKF. Um, you can go on um, Facebook, but I'm Facebook banned. I'm, I'm banned from Facebook. How to leave this feet fetishism? You want to leave it, Roxy? You want you don't want to have it? What are you doing? Um, why? There's nothing wrong with a foot fetish. It's fine. Yeah. So there's that. Any other questions? No, she's not coming back. I hope she's not gone forever. I was really enjoying our
sending her the link now. So yeah, um, go to Patreon. We have a um, our Discord chat group. If you go to yourkinkyfriends.com, seriously, go to the search engine, okay? Um, on your kinky friends little box. Uh, on your phone, it's on, if you go to the pancake, you know, and you hit it, there's that. Um, and on top of that, um, you know, we have a, a, a Discord chat group. You know, on the search engine, you could really just look up anything you want. And um, that's good. Um, uh, what else? Uh, what else? The, um, oh, she texted me. Um, yeah, you go to the Discord chat group, you can join it. I Rocky Singh says, I do normal sex. Okay, have fun. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. I don't have before five or six year I have suffering this. Wait, you haven't done you haven't had sex for five or six years? Or what? I don't know. Ah, she's back. Like the power went out for a second. I was like, ah, sorry. It's okay. My fault, my fault. I'm sorry, guys. So it's, it's, it's not that bad. No big deal. Like we do it, we do it punk rock style. So yeah. Roxy Singh has been doing it, has been suffering for five or six years. We've been with, talking about, with what? I guess not having sex. Oh, is that by choice or? No, he's been suffering, he says. Oh. Oh, I okay, I see. Usually I'm not feet fetish too much. Normal sex I don't have before five or six years. I have suffering. I don't know. Um I'm not entirely sure. Um any advice to you? I mean, because you're married. Yeah. You know, you, you're married. Do you I mean and it, things ebb and flows even with my relationships and we have an open relationship we um you know sometimes it can go like like a couple weeks and then sometimes the next couple weeks are like oh yeah really yeah. exhausting <laughs> oh yeah we will have weeks where like we just don't really have sex um yeah. and then you know then there are weeks where it's like every single day um it, so it does definitely ebb and flow um I mean, normal sex, like, what does that even mean? That sounds so boring. <laughs> it's, it, to me, that's just like missionary. And it's like, I couldn't do that like all the time. That's just yeah, so I think it's when just like a man lays on a woman and sticks his, you know, you know what? I mean, that's great. And that's fine if that's what you're into. That's just like not me. That just seemed, like I would be so uh, bored. I'd be like, are we done? Like, can we keep, can we find, do something else? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so um, so now. yeah, so I do. I, I'm like I said, hesitant to say that I actually work in the sex industry, but I do like sell panties and uh, saw like just all that kind of stuff. So, um, fetish friendly, whatever. Okay, yeah. Now let's talk about panties. Are they? Um, I'm gonna sound such. I'm gonna sound like such a creep, but I know people are gonna want to know these answers. So. Um, are they thong panties? Are they regular panties? A whole they... thing, all the things. Like just, I have like a whole panty drawer. So I and I, I usually you will a whole menu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I was, I was, talk, I was interviewing someone, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I have a panty menu." She yeah. literally has a menu. Yeah. Like you could hold it, 
And it, oh it, yeah, mine's not like a menu. It's just I I generally just like send a picture. It's like my panty drawer. I just have like I just send a picture of like all the different kinds of panties that I have. And but I mean, if you're into like socks or stockings or whatever like that, I have you know I have a separate drawer for that and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's just yeah, you just and then you can just go through and just be like, I want the blue one. That's the thong or the boy shorts or whatever. You know. No, and and you can do. You, um keep them dirty or do you clean them? depends it's it's by request um it can be by request so uh sometimes you know usually it's like a 24-hour wear um and i'll usually like come in them once um for that 24 hours um and if you want more than that like a specific amount then yeah um and all my panties and socks and stuff like that come in like an airtight bag with a personalized note and you have the option of either you get three pictures of your choice with like your order um and i can either send those you digitally or i can print them out and like send them with like so you have physicals like a physical copy of them wow awesome awesome okay cool so um i mean I, without giving too much information about you know your husband and everything like that your husband is obviously um how about the accepts and embraces oh, very supportive it was actually his idea to start like yeah he was like you should do it i see women i see like really beautiful women on reddit you know like they do this all the time you should just you should try it and i was like okay way i got the same attitude I'm like, yeah. Oh, he'll take the pictures. He'll do, you know, all this stuff. So, okay. So, in other words, he's, I don't want to say he's a kinky person, but he's definitely open minded, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which is a wonderful, beautiful thing. Yeah. And, and it's so cool that you two found each other. But I'm always curious on how people like that find each other because there's so many before you know you answer there's so many people that i have met who um they just shouldn't be together you know like so, right. so like so some of them are really like open and free and then some of them are very closed up and yeah. you know, and that's going to cause problems and i am and i'm sure you are too i'm very thankful that we are with people who um you know who are open-minded and yeah. free who are willing to like yeah sure let's do the let's, let's at least let's try it once you know what i mean yeah. or something like yeah. that you know so um how did you two meet well um it's kind of like your story with um with lynn okay. um so we were in junior high and high school together uh, we went to junior high and high school together and, um, but we didn't really have a thing back then. I had like a crush on him and he kind of had a crush on me, but we never, we were just friends. Like we were truly just friends. Um, and then, um, I moved, I went to, I moved to my home. Um, I'm from, uh, so I was born in Texas, but my home is Chicago. That's my home. That's the place that I consider to be my hometown. I love it. It's my favorite. I love it. That's I mean, Chicago many times. Love it. I had many yeah. good times there. Yeah. So that's my home. So when I say I'm from Chicago, that's what I mean. Cause that would be where I consider myself to be from. Um, and I, so then i when I was 18, I moved to Chicago, um, to actually go to treatment. Um, that was the reason that I moved to Chicago. Um, that's a whole other thing, but, uh, so but there was a period of about five six years where we didn't have contact like i didn't it, we kind of just like went our separate ways um we didn't really have any contact with each other um and then i my parents i have a very young little sister and my parents were older so i'm the oldest child so i got the oldest child card played on me and um my parents you know needed help with my younger sister <laughs> And so I came home or I came back to Texas. And when I got back to Texas after about five or six years, um, we kind of like reconnected on Facebook and um, yeah, we've like been together ever since. 
That's pretty awesome. Okay. So yeah. All right. So um, now the the kink rabbit hole goes deep. Right? Oh yeah. There, there are things that I'm into that I never thought I'd be into. Right. You know what I mean? Um, for example, I never thought I'd own a male chassis device that's custom made. Mm -hmm. That's also very expensive. <laughs> right. um, um, so is there any, and, and, and like, you're not, don't try to prove anything about who's kinkier or whatever like that. But like everybody's, it, the, like I said, the kink rabbit hole goes deep, you know, even if it's something like minor or not that kind of underground or anything like that. But, um, are there certain things that you want to try that you're just getting started in trying or that you're just curious about? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And um, we kind of talked about this a little bit on my show. Yeah. So, um, and is, uh, so uh, like, man, come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the main, I guess like the, the sort of the most tame one um, is like wax play, like with candles. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm incredibly sensitive to scents, like smells. Um, but I also have the skin from hell, so it can't like the candle would have to be made like it can't have any sort of like weird chemicals or something like that in it. It has to be, it would probably have to be like all natural because otherwise I'm going to my I'll get like a rash or something crazy. Um, but I've wanted to try that like with like with wax play. Um, I, do, I, I like the feeling of wax. Um, I like peeling it off. Um, yeah. Yeah. I like, you know, I, I just, I, I like the warmth of it. Um, I like the feeling of it, like, I guess, trickling down. I like, I love the way it looks like on melted candles. I love the way that it looks. There's this like gothic image of it. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I love it. Um, so there's that one, like I said, probably the most tame. Um, and then I guess probably the most like extreme one is, uh, I want my husband to, you know, like put a gun inside of me, not loaded, nothing. No, 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 no. None of that. I would be terrified. Um, maybe we could work up to something like that. I don't know. I just feel like really scared. Um, but like, just to, I just want to know what it would feel like. I don't even know if I would like it. It's just something that like I had, it was kind of like I had a wild hair and I was like, huh, I bet that would be fun or interesting. And I kind of want to try it. Um, yeah, I don't I, know. It's possible I could. It's possible I I could hate it. It's possible I'd be like, eh, no, I'm not into that. Um, or it's entirely possible I'd be like, no, like keep going. <laughs> as long as it's consensual and as long as it's safe, you, like it does not. There's just nothing wrong with that. Um, okay, so um, rapid fire recommendations, and they don't have to be BDSM or kink related. Okay. Okay. Recommend a film. A film, any film by any, any director film at all. It, it doesn't have to be. It does not have to be sex. I'm not always about sex and kink. No, no, no. That's fine. Um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Great film. Tra Charlie Kaufman did that. Um, yeah. Um, or Silkwood. I mean, there's so many. Silkwood just it de depends on the genre. But okay. whatever. All right. Recommend a book. A book. I'm currently on a, hist a history, like, trail right now. So anything by James Holland. Um, I'm currently reading the like the rise of the German Empire. Um, so from 1939 to 1942. Um, but if you, you know, want to do fiction or something else, I recommend one of your books because I've Ooh. looked into them and I'm like these are really interesting and good and they're actually very well written. I was very, I was like, oh yes. It's like well written because I've read some things, not by you, but like by other people who um, have done some kink stuff. And it's like not very well written. And I'm like, it kind of takes me out of it. But I've like read like the samples of some of your books. And I was just like, oh, this is like really well written and like very interesting. So I would recommend like your books, too. Thank you very much. That's great. Uh, but just so everybody, just so they know, my, my books aren't like um, they're not like. They're not sex books. They're relationship books. They're yeah. in, the, in the way that they're like memoirs. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're memoirs. But I just have led a very kinky lifestyle. Right. So <laughs> there's humor in it. Like it's very funny and it's very good. But it's it's that they're just very well written. 
the samples that I've read and the things that I've read. So yeah, I would recommend this too. <laughs> I'll, I'll mail you a bunch if you want. So um, you have to sign it though. <laughs> of course, Abigail. I would totally. I would never not sign a, a book for you. I love books. Books are like one of my favorite things. I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, you're you're like my mom in the sense that like her her library. Yeah. She's like, I like the smell of books. She's like, the, the this is, it's the only kind of mold I like. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, exactly. Right. I love the smell of new books. I love the smell of old books. I'll just, but I don't, I am not an advocate. I'm a purist. I'm not an advocate for like the Kindle or like eBooks. No, no, I'm a purist. Like I want to hold the book. I want to smell the book. I want like, maybe that's even a fetish. I don't know. But like, I want to smell it. I want to like. Is. In, in a way, because I have I have con I have a huge record collection, um, yeah. and all the CDs and stuff like that, even tapes, cassette right. tapes, stuff like that. Like I, I like holding it in my hand, looking at the mm -hmm. artwork, reading the liner notes. You can't do that on digital. No. It just doesn't no. work. You it's know? not the same. It's just yeah. not. Like the, like for example, the Velvet Underground and Nico, the banana cover. You, you can't get that on Kindle or on Amazon Prime. You can't, you know, you can't, you can't get that whole thing. You can't hold it in your hand and put it on a on a turntable. Right. And like, well, and and it like, but it also becomes a part of you. Like it becomes yeah. like once it's yours, you know, like it sort of molds itself to you, like the book. So like the pages will mold, you know, like you'll be able to see where, how much you read it by the wear and tear of it, you know? And it's like with, like with records too, like those are your skips in your record. Those are, you know, like, those, <laughs> That's a good point. Sound, That's a good... you know, like those things, like it molds itself to you and it customizes itself specifically to you as a person. That's and an interesting way to look at it. That's a good way to look at it. I like that. I like that. I'll use it. I'll I'll give you the credit with the line, but I'll you know I'll give you the credit where it's due. But yeah, I'm gonna use. You don't it. have to. I can't be the only person that's had that thought, so it's probably not original, which is fine. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about music. Recommend a song. <sighs> any song doesn't matter any genre. Any song at all by anyone at any time, any genre. Okay, well, one of my favorite like happy songs is September by Earth, Wind and Fire. It's like okay. It's um, it's just like a happy song that like when I kind of like when we were talking about earlier with depression, like if I hear that song, then it's like I'm momentarily taken out of that depression because I just like dance and stuff. All right, September. Yeah, September by Earth, Wind and Fire. I, I'll, I'll look I'll look into that. I like her. I'm a, I'm a fan of Earth, Wind and Fire. I guarantee you you've heard it. But you probably, probably just didn't know like the band or whatever. I, yeah, probably. I mean, there's just there's so many songs. Okay. All right. Recommend the television show. The Queen's Gambit. Oh that's recent. About, wait, that's about chess, right? I yeah. it's it's like a mini series on Netflix right now. So good. I cried. I I laughed. I, I wanted to throw the phone. I wanted to throw the remote at the TV. Like it's got the whole range of all the things. It's so good. Highly I, recommend. It. I am a. I, I'm a big chess player. I love chess. I really do. So it's like I. St I started watching it, and then like a bunch of personal stuff happened, and I, I had to stop. But like I'm going right back in. Yeah. Oh, another thing. Um, today, this morning. The new season of Letter Kenny, which is um, out, yeah, yeah, it's it's fucking great. <laughs> so good. Have you you know Letter Kenny? I've heard of it. I haven't actually seen Letter, it. Letter Kenny is is a Canadian television show, and it, it's really quick. It's really kind of silly, and it's very. How can I say it? It's it, it's very funny. It's 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 extremely funny, and there's so many things going on, and it's just like everyone seems to be kind of like an idiot, but yeah, you, know, you kind of root for him in the same yeah. way. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Letter Kenny, new season. Letter Kenny. I need to. All get right. On Recom that. Recommend a meal. 
a meal. Well, okay. I like baba ganoush. I love oh. Persian food. Persian food, tahini, like all the uh, Persian oh, food. It's God. like you know some stuff. of my favorite. That and Ethiopian food, those oh, are like yeah. two of my favorite kinds of food. I love them. Um, but I mean, it's not really a meal. I guess you could make it a meal, but I, I generally just like eat it as a snack, as baba ganoush. Do it. So good. You know what? I, there was a sandwich named after me at the, my local falafel place. Oh, and look at this. It's, it's falafel. You know, there's some lettuce, tahini, falafel tahini, baba ganoush, and a little, instead, oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. No, not lettuce. Tabbouleh. Yo, I was going to say. So, tabbouleh, baba ganoush, and falafel all in the PM. I need that. Is there any way to like get that shipped? And Texas? they call it, they, guess what they called it? They called it because I'm in, I'm in uh, New Jersey. They called it the Jerusalem. They call it, no, no, I'm sorry. They call it Tanix, Tanix Jerusalem, which, because it, <laughs> There's a slang term for New Jersey called New Jerusalem. Um, I yeah. heard that. Yeah, that's a hip hop thing. And oh. they named it um, Tanix Jerusalem. And people were like, what the hell is that? It's like it's Baba Ganesh, Falafel, Tabuli, all in a pita. And it's, oh my God. Is there any way to get that like mailed to me? <laughs> is there any way? Whatever that restaurant is, I need to know. Can you just like ship it? To I'll pay for it. I just want to know. <laughs> well, if you if you're ever in New Jersey, go to Crazy Four Falafel. It's great. All right, <laughs> here's the last question. Um, this is the three letter game. The three uh, the three word game. Okay. So, all right. You have to say three things you love, and they all have to start with the same letter. Any letter you want. Okay. okay, but one of them has to be some kind of kinky, you know what I mean? So let's put it this way: as this is an example, right, so like books, bitches, and BDSM. It, well, yeah, that's one way to put it. But you could also put it like sleep, sploshing, and showers. Ooh, you know, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of sloshing, but I do love sleep right. and showers. You know, right. um, so <laughs> so yeah. The three letter word. Any any letter in the alphabet, go. Any letter of the alphabet. Okay. Yeah. Baths, butts, slash boobies. Does that count? Yeah. Okay. And um books. Yeah. Ooh. More broadcasting. Oh, you're using the slash as one. Okay. No, that, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. That's yeah. fine. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, are we done? There's no way. Yeah, no, no. We could do a part two. We could do a part three. We could do. You know, oh, absolutely! I'd be so down. Just let me know. Whatever, I'm down for I, it. I, I actually want to do a whole um, podcast episode of just people doing podcasts, so we can get Miss Gamora, we can get Mommy Blunt, uh, we can get Black People Kink on here. We could have a big panel. Yes, like, I, let's I'd do like it. To, I'd like to get Rob from after the credits, but he doesn't like to show his face because um, he, he loves to talk about movies. But yeah, like we got a whole podcast network, which I would love for you to be a part of. Yes, uh, absolutely. Oh my gosh, I'd be so honored. That'd be amazing to be a part of y'all's wonderful like connection. Oh God, yeah, we'll promote you like crazy. So we love you. We we totally do. Okay, so everybody. Um, <sighs> The Magnificent Abigail from um, The Manic Weird. Manic Pixie, Pixie Weirdo. I'm sorry. The Manic Pixie Weirdo podcast. Um, the Manic Pixie Weirdo podcast. Um, just support her. Support her. Um, you know, go to her site. Give her good reviews. Uh, but she's really doing. Like, Trust me. I've listened to the show. It's good. I've been on the show. It's good. I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't promote it if I didn't like it. And um and you know I do this for the love. We're not doing this for money or anything like that. So um yeah, we, totally. So this will be up soon. Support her. She's on Twitter, she's on um I, I have an email. I'm working on like a 
Instagram and pin er, and all that stuff. So haven't quite got all that stuff up yet, but you can email at manic pixie weirdo podcast at protonmail.com. Um, but follow us on Twitter. I'm still working on getting all the social media stuff up. So, but just yeah. Twitter is the best one to do it. So there you go. So, um, yeah, any anything you want to promote, um, any links you want to promote, anything, just go. Oh, um, okay. So yeah, so MP Weirdo Podcast um is the Twitter handle. Um, you can email at manapixie weirdo podcast at protonmail.com. Um, if you want to buy stuff, if you want to buy, you know, fetish stuff, so panties or anything like that, you can find me on Reddit um at crazy baby. Um yeah, crazy baby. I'll I'll send you the link to it to my reddit that so people can buy um pennies and socks or fe fetish fetish friendly um i'm open-minded let me know if um you want something specific and i can i'll try to do it i'll try to figure it out <laughs> so any of those things wonderful wonderful okay oh my god you have no idea how much i love this person i support abigail and her podcast um she's just she's just my kind of my kind of person so um please support your kinky friends.com go to patreon not a comment slash ykf and um i'm in facebook jail so you're not gonna hear from me in facebook but i'm on twitter at nicholas tannick and then there's um at nick tannick on instagram and then at friends kinky on instagram and at friends kinky on twitter um abigail please stay on the line real quick um you know after we're done but um it's getting late my friends my dom is calling me remember the cardinal rule everybody be cool be kind and keep an open mind take care happy holidays happy new year so that was the end of part two i hope you guys liked it it was so much fun i loved him he was a joy to have on the podcast we will definitely have him back um Remember to hopefully like and subscribe if you liked it on the YouTube channel. Um, rating and giving us a review on iTunes apparently helps a lot. Um, so that would be good, you guys, if you could do that uh, for the podcast. That'd be so helpful. Thank you so much if you choose to do that. Um, you can find us on Twitter um, at MP Weirdo Podcast. Um, we are also on Instagram at the, um, the underscore main underscore weirdo one, uh, on Instagram. Our email is, um, manicpixieweirdo at protonmail.com. So email us there. Um, if you want to share your story or, you know, you have topic ideas or any, just anything. Um, yeah. So thank you guys so much for listening really appreciate it. Uh, have a good one, guys. Be kind and stay weird. Bye, guys.